Welcome to this Way to Fire YouTube video where today it's me, Andy, and I am doing something I thought I would never do, which is to review some Perry Miniatures Franco-Prussian War Plastic Infantry uh, for the Prussians in 28mm. I genuinely am so excited to be looking at these. Um, if you've watched my interview with Michael Perry, you will know that I'm a huge fan of this period of history. Uh, I think it's fascinating. Um, Empire of the French falling and the unification of Germany, um, which obviously set in train a huge number of other changes leading into the 20th century, uh, which we still have repercussions from today. Um, really, really fascinating period. Um, uniforms are fantastic. Military uh, exploits, Phenomenal, really great. Um, of course you need infantry that, and you need very large battles. So plastics uh, make a huge um, benefit for those of us who want to play in this era. Um, 28mm, some people say isn't the right scale for this thing, but I think it all depends what you're aiming for. You know, you can still play quite large games at the brigade and divisional level um, using 28mm, let alone all the skirmishes you can do, of course. So, anyway. Um, Michael Perry and Perry Miniatures have released these two uh, boxes of 39 figures for £20, which is obviously a great bargain, um, as you would come to expect from the plastics from Perry Miniatures. And they've got uh, Franco Prussian War 1870 71, Prussian Infantry Advancing. Okay, so this is the Prussian Infantry Advancing set. And then you've got a Prussian skirmish line, because actually this probably was the first modern war in the fact that a lot of the fighting very quickly deteriorated into uh, skirmish, extended skirmish lines really, um, because the effect of the weaponry was so strong that to stand in a sort of American Civil War style or Napoleonic style and fire like they are perhaps doing in this picture was um, not going to last very long. So anyway. Uh, let's have a look at the box. These basically these boxes are the same, although they're called different things. They're just different proportions of the same um, sprues. There are two sprues in them, and again we've got the usual little bit of art on the back, um, uniform codes, and showing you how to build a model roughly, and just the same variant on a different one for the advancing pack. So we're just going to take one of these boxes, and it will be the same either way inside. So inside the box you have a set of bases. Uh, I don't particularly use this size, but I keep them just in case. And then you have the painting guide and uniform guide um, for the Prussian Line Infantry, 1870-71. And this would be the same for earlier, slightly earlier periods as well, the other wars of German unification. Um, so it gives you a little bit of uniforms, which are fairly generic, actually. Uniforms don't change a lot between different um, parts of this period and also it says Prussian but it would also cover some of the other North German states as well. Uh, it does show you Landwehr as well so when I show you the sprue there are differences for the Landwehr so these were a reservist unit but they did fight in the front line as well certainly in the later part of the uh, Franco-Prussian War. There's some flags. Interesting thing about the flags is that some of the older flags, these older pattern ones, were so destroyed by this stage, they hadn't really had anything done with them since, that some were merely tatters actually on the stand, on the uh, standard pole. So that's an interesting sort of thing that most units, uh, most countries would have replaced their flags, but the Prussians didn't for some reason. Um, here's a guide as well to how to build the sprue. This is only for the command sprue, the others are self-evident as I will show. So not huge amounts on there, not particularly complex, but enough to know how to paint your miniatures up uh, in a standard way. And again here, one of the main differences is in the cuffs. But actually, it, quite easy, you can paint them very basically and it'd still be absolutely fine. The sprues themselves, so they come in different proportions depending on which set you want, but there are two sprues here of the infantry and then I'll show you the command sprue in a moment. So let's take a look at the skirmish line sprue. So there are five uh, kneeling and standing models on this sprue and one dead one. 
and you can see that the main differences are that all the sprues are body and legs attached all of them have this separate half of the uh, bed roll um, which you can if I turn around just sort of glue on here very simple um, really easy to do a couple of them come with the uh, sword bayonets uh, that's for the kneeling ones because you want to, might want to change the position of those the others have them cast on um, and then we have a variety of uh, rifles, Dre's rifles in various stages of um, pulling out the bolt, shooting, um, advancing, so you can build them in a number of different ways, whatever you want. The other thing you have here is different headgear. So there's the uh, two different types of headgear available in the pickle alb. So we've got, uh, these are the 1860 ones, I think, which are slightly lower, and then the 1867 pickle alb, slightly higher, I think. I'm not gonna make a difference in that. I wouldn't notice on the table at all. Uh, you have one guy with a beard, and the others are clean shaven in each of those. Uh, some with their chin straps down, some with their chin straps over the top. Um, and then we have two other sets of heads on here as well, some with the feldmits. So this is a soft undress cap for which there is, um, yeah, these are commonly worn in the field as well, not just in camp. And then we have five heads with the Landwehr Shako. Um, and the Landwehr Shako was um, fairly basic, and you can still, it looks very similar to the um, uh, German police uh, hat of the sort of World War II era as well. It's got this big white Maltese cross on it. And that's quite interesting because I've, I've don't think there are any land variants, say, uh, the Perry's previous Franco-Prussian War range from uh, Wargames Foundry. So that's a useful addition. And, you know, you wouldn't want to spend a fortune on uh, lower grade troops that may only be guarding things as well, probably. So having them in plastic is quite good. On the other sprue, um, the advancing sprue, here we have... Um, the same five bodies, the similar styles of hats. So we've got the felbets, the Landwehr cap, and the two types of pickle alb. I think the heads are basically the same, I think. I don't think there's any difference in those. The same sort of pattern with the um, uh, knapsacks as well. And you can see all of these have different bayonets to attach. Uh, they all need to have them attached separately to so give you freedom to move the arms. And also because on the arms, what you don't have, um, they, they come in two different types of arms. One marching, so a left shoulder sort of march. So, um, and interestingly, all the legs are right foot forward, so they do look a bit more uniform when they're marching, which is good for a 19th century army, I think. Um, so you can have them with the sloped arms on the left, or you can have them with the arm gun held in the right arm at the trail, and they come with a matching left hand to hold the bayonet away from the leg so it's not banging into their leg. So that's a nice little touch as well. I really like that. And then finally there is the command sprue. So this command sprue shows uh, four uh, people on here, or four bodies on here. We have um, this one, which is the bugler, I think. Yeah, the hornist, so he's got his bugle there. We then have the standard bearer, who comes with his obviously standard arm, and the um, tassels and banners that were a big thing of the German um, uh, Prussian army at this stage. We then have a drummer with his small kettle drum here, snare drum sort of thing. Uh, and then there's an officer as well. And if you want the officer to be in a undress cap, he's got the peaked feldmets, which is a different sort of one. You can have a pistol or um, or a sword, depending on how you want to dress him up. Uh, these guys have their knapsacks already stuck on the back there, so they're those separate like the other infantry. Uh, and that's it. Uh, again, you've got the Landwehr hats if you wish, uh, and a different types of pickle album feldmets as well. So lots of lots of different options. Like I say, each of those two boxes just comes with different proportions. They both contain uh, some of each of these, but um, and the idea behind that is even for the advancing ones, they give you enough for a skirmish line out the front, and for the main skirmish line, they tended to have a reserve, which they have given you some advancing ones. So you can argue whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. I think it's fine. You're basically going to mix and match them anyway.
So what do they look like? Here they are. So I have built them in a number of different standard ways. So this is uh, marching at the uh, rifle over the left shoulder. Um, I've forgotten to put his uh, bayonet on actually, so I've just realized that. Um, and you see, he looks really nice. Comes out really well, really characterful, that bearded face. I really like him. Um, he's obviously stepping forwards with his right leg, so he should normally have his left arm back a little bit, which seems to fit quite nicely. We have the other advancing one. This time I've got him advancing at the trail, so he's got his rifle there at the trail. Um, he's holding his bayonet forwards to stop it banging into his leg. Yeah, I think that looks really good. It's an interesting pose, actually. You often see pictures, uh, models at a trail in in paintings and stuff, but you don't always see them in miniatures, to be honest, so I like him. And then of the skirmishing ones, we've got this one who's slightly more sort of forthright and perhaps thrusting a little bit. Um, he looks really good. Really, I like the fact he's got a beard as well, he looks proper nasty with the beard on. And then, because they were allowed to wear beards, unlike some armies at the time which weren't. And then we had the shooting one, um, and again he looks really nice line lining up down the barrel of the gun. You can tilt his head quite nicely without any problem. Really good. So I think well, a lot of people will be interested in to see what the size comparison is with um, War Games Foundry miniatures, if they have some of those. So let's take a similar posed Prussian here, um, painted a long time ago by me. And we'll put him next to the new Prussian. And you can see there's quite a difference in size, like probably a gaming equivalent of half a foot, six inches in height difference at least. Um, that's going to look quite striking in the same unit, I think. Um, so I don't sure they're very compatible. You might squeeze the occasional one in. I mean, human beings do come in different sizes, but I think as war gamers, we typically want a more uniform approach. Now, they would probably look fine in completely different regiments on the same battlefield because you're not going to do that sort of immediate size comparison. Um, so I'm still going to use my previous War Games Foundry miniatures as well because they're already painted, more importantly. But uh, I probably won't be mixing them up in the same unit. Um, as an interesting aside, I thought, well, okay, War Games Foundry is no good, but what about some of the other uh, wars that happened in this period? So. Austrians of 1866. There's no current plans from Foundry, uh, some, sorry, from Perry to produce these. Uh, hopefully they will in the future. But in the meantime, there is a really great range of 28 millimeter um, metal uh, Austrians uh, and Prussians, for that matter, originally produced by Helion and Company, which is a, which actually makes some fantastic, uh, publish some fantastic books for this period. And they did have a brief foray into miniatures. And then that's been bought by North Star. So Nick Air at North Star runs these. And these are some of my Austrians. Um, and I wasn't sure how I was going to use these because they're much larger you know, than the old foundry ones. Again, you've got that same issue. But lo and behold, let's have a look how they compare with the new Perry Prussians. And I think they compare very nicely indeed which is fantastic because now I can use these excellent Austrians available from North Star um, and I can compare them and compete them against my Prussians from uh, either from North Star which have Prussians as well or from uh, Perry because particularly the Perry plastics are going to give me a huge range. Now, of course, I'll have to get the French from Perry to match up in the same size. Well, that's a tough thing to do, but I'm sure I can manage to buy some Perry miniatures. Uh, but I'm really, really happy to see that because I wasn't sure what I was going to do with my Austrians. Um, but look, they are going to fit very nicely on the battlefield together. So I'm actually genuinely very happy about that. Um, okay, so... I am very, very excited about these new uh, Prussians and the French to come from uh, Perry Miniatures. I think they look fantastic. The sizing is different from the War Games Foundry ones for sure. But like I say, I'm really excited to see them match up with my Austrians there. 
And so, um, yeah, expect to see me paint up plenty over the course of the uh, next few months. Uh, there's one other thing as well I forgot to show. I'm just going to show you it now. So if you buy three boxes, any combination of the Prussians, from, pr plastic Prussians, from um, Perry Miniatures, you will get a free Brigade General. And this is Steinmetz, General Steinmetz. So let's have a look at him. Um, just a little bit of fluff on the packing. So he was uh, 70 something, late 70s at the time of the Franco Prussian War. It's difficult to see him in the glare from the uh, camera. But even if you. And he was a slightly. Uh, Slightly lunatic leader, I think, to be honest. He um, was very aggressive, got himself into a few difficulties, particularly in Franco-Prussian War, um, responsible for some very foolhardy attacks, probably, and cost a lot of his men's lives. Um, not their best general by any stretch. But the model's really great, um, and you could use him as any sort of general officer. He's got um, a pair of binoculars there uh, in his hand. Uh, and actually, with this uniform, he would suit a lot of 19th century armies, not just the Prussians, actually. Um, he'd be usable in lots of different armies, um, for sure. Um, yep, yeah, so good. He comes, like I say, with uh, three boxes of miniatures. i just poke him there. There we go. Right, great. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. Um, please check out the other Way to Fire videos. Listen out for the Way to Fire podcast. Check out the Way to Fire Hobby Hangout, where you'll see me posting lots of different stuff as I progress through painting up my miniatures. Okay. Thanks very much, guys. Take care. Bye.